Hi, everybody. Uh, we have two classes tonight. We have a quiz tonight. So my class, make sure you've downloaded it. Um, it was published. So make sure you download the quiz for tonight. We don't need uh, calculators or whiteboards for tonight's quiz, okay? So I'll be taking attendance in just a bit. Um, and we have quite a few people on here, so. Um, let me take it then. All right, so for your quiz, just show me your surroundings. And uh, my class, you don't have to show me your ID. Uh, Dr. Lundy's class, you have to show me your ID because I don't know who you are. Um, any questions about the quiz before we start? I'm uh, sorry. Go ahead, Brandy. Oh, um, so let me unplug real quick so you can see around me. Oh, no, no, I wasn't calling you yet. Oh, okay. Just hang tight. All right, uh, Diane, you look ready to go, go. Just show me your surroundings. Okay, you're good. Sabrina, ready? You don't have to show me your ID, I recognize you. Okay. Nicole Morris. Okay. Good. Yep, just make sure your camera stays on. Naru, Naru Patel. Okay. You're good, Naru. Brandy Maxwell. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Show me your ID and surroundings. Oh, I'm, my ID's in the car. I'm sorry. I can grab it real quick. All right. Yeah, just grab it whenever you can. Anita, ready? All right, you're good. Katina, ready? Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, you're good. Noelle, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, Richard. I shake my legs. He's a ranger. Uh -huh. He's so brainless. And... Okay, you're good. Victoria Langley. Mm hmm. Okay, Kylie. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're good. Cecily, ready? Thank you. Kelsey, ready? Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay, you're fine, Kelsey. Alik. Thank you. Alejandro, ready? Mm -hmm. You're good to go. Christine. Okay. Uh, Yanesha. Mm hmm Okay, Andre, ready? Thank you. Tina, ready? Good. 
Good. Amanda Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Emily. Uh -huh. You're not in the car, you're just outside. Okay. All right, Susan. Susan Ruas Cruz. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Hey, Ola, ready? Good. Jermaine? Okay. Okay, you're good, Jermaine. Uh, Raquel. Hey, you're good. Kylie, ready? Oh, I did you already, Kylie. Forget it. Uh, uh, Erica Williams. And Soraya. Ashley. Okay. Dallas. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're fine. Crystal, ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Katie, I don't know, Garcia. Okay. Katia. Okay. I always take the quizzes on my phone. Do you want me to switch? No, you're fine as long as you stay on Zoom. Alexis, ready? Okay, Sydney, you ready? All right, uh, Suzanne. Okay, you're good. You man. Okay, er. Okay, Amber. Good, Kim. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jasmine. All right, Peggy. Good, R Y, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you're good. Is there anybody I did not call? You needed to see my ID. Uh Brenda, I see you. You're fine. Let me just see your surroundings. You're on here twice, Brenda. And then Jacqueline Diaz, are you here? There you are. Okay. Uh huh. I didn't. You're good. Okay. Anybody I did not call? Amy, myself. No, oh, sorry, Amy. That's okay. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Let me give you a. What's that? Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you got Amy. 
All right, everybody, please mute. I will give you a passcode. The two classes have different passcodes. So uh, for Dr. Lundy's class, what I tell you, and I'll tell my class like we always do, you guys have 15 minutes to do the quiz. So um, it'll take us to about uh, 425, which is 625 Eastern time. So uh, keep your cameras on, but you don't have to be sitting in front of the computer. If you finish your quiz, just keep your camera on so you're counted on Zoom, okay? And then just come back to the screen at 425, which is 625 Eastern time. Any extra questions before we start? No, okay. Dr. Lundy, your passcode is capital M Mercury, $21 sign. If you guys have any questions throughout the quiz, please raise your hand and don't call out. Okay, my class, your password, capital P, 1206. Okay, Lundy's one more time. Sure, Lundy is Mercury, capital M, $21 sign. What was our class's password? Yeah, our class is password, the word password with capital P, 1206. I can't get it to pop up for Dr. Lundy's class. Yeah, I can't either. Y'all, I just had to spell out Mercury Mercury with a capital M. Oh. Don't spell it out. I know. I didn't either. Thank you, Raquel. <laughs> It still didn't work. Mm -mm. Well, guys, it should. She should have it downloaded for you. Can Can you repeat ours again, our class? Because it's not working for me for some reason. It is. Capital P-A-S-S-W-R-D-1206. It's not working for me either. Okay, raise These your hand if you're having me. troubles. Raise your hands because it's very distracting, guys. Raise your hands if you're having trouble. Don't call out.
Jacqueline, Alexis, and Naru, you need your cameras on. Richard, I need your camera on. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to sit there. You guys don't have to sit in front of the camera. Just leave the camera on. Alexis, same with you. You got to leave the camera on. You don't have to sit in front of it.
fucking god, this is the Yeah, what else? Okay, we're up at time, but some of us started a little late. Please send me a note in the chat privately if you still need more time or have more time on the quiz. I'll give you about two minutes to do so. Anybody who wants to change to their computer, feel free.
working. Alrighty, so it's a really big class tonight. We're gonna move forward since nobody has said anything. Um, so just so you guys know, we had our our exam and homework grades are on as of now. So homework grades will get shut off the end of this week, if not before then. So just know if you're missing assignments, um, you'll see that on there. So make sure you look at that. In addition, uh, study guide for exam three will be coming out. Did my class get exam three study guide? We got ours for Dr. Lundy's. Yeah. Did you guys get mine? I, I didn't. I no, you I didn't. didn't. Okay. So I'll send it tonight. Um, I sent you guys an email from my class as well for some case studies we're going to work through tonight in groups. Um, and what I need you to do is you're, I don't have everyone's email for Dr. Lundy's class, but we will share, um, we'll share that information with each other in a group. Okay. So tonight's chapters and reading was on uh, finances of healthcare, abuse, and infectious disease. You guys all had a paper that's due tonight on your infectious disease. So we'll be sharing some information that we found about our um, projects tonight. But initially we're gonna start and take a look at um, abuse. And I want to say that abuse in our chapter, let me pull up for you guys some things I'd like to highlight in the reading, which was important. Let me just pull that up for you. Um, it, it talks about all different kinds of abuse. We're gonna work through some case studies regarding abuse as well. Um, Let me see here. Let me just pull it up here and we'll take a look. Oh, of course, it's not pulling up the book. Oh, goodness sakes. Alrighty, so um, we look at different things with abuse and neglect that we'll talk through in our case studies. But what we're going to initially do is I'm going to watch a little video. Has anyone heard of the ACEs study that was, has been done? This speaks a lot to um, to childhood trauma and the impact of uh, childhood trauma, uh, violence and abuse as um, our children get older and what that impact is. So we're gonna take a little look at this. Um, it's a big case study that was done by, uh, not case study, I'm sorry. It was a big study that was done by um, Kaiser Permanente, an insurance company and um, an institution. So let's take a look at that video real quickly. I don't know why it's not, let oh, come on. It's not letting me, hey now. Will not let me share what I want. Hold on just one second, guys. But if you still think stocks, real estate, or crypto are the best passive income investment In the mid-90s, the CDC and Kaiser Permanente discovered an exposure that dramatically increased the risk for seven out of ten of the leading causes of death in the United States. 
In high doses, it affects brain development, the immune system, hormonal systems, and even the way our DNA is read and transcribed. Folks who are exposed in very high doses have triple the lifetime risk of heart disease and lung cancer, and a 20-year difference in life expectancy. And yet, doctors today are not trained in routine screening or treatment. Now, the exposure I'm talking about is not a pesticide or a packaging chemical; it's childhood trauma. Okay, what kind of trauma am I talking about here? I'm not talking about failing a test or losing a basketball game. I am talking about threats that are so severe or pervasive that they literally get under our skin and change our physiology. Things like abuse or neglect, or growing up with a parent who struggles with mental illness or substance dependence. Now, for a long time, I viewed these things in the way I was trained to view them. Either as a social problem, refer to social services, or as a mental health problem, refer to mental health services. And then something happened to make me rethink my entire approach. When I finished my residency, I wanted to go someplace where I felt really needed, some place where I could make a difference. So I came to work for California Pacific Medical Center. One of the best private hospitals in Northern California, and together we opened a clinic in Bayview Hunters Point, one of the poorest, most underserved neighborhoods in San Francisco. Now, prior to that point, there had been only one pediatrician in all of Bayview to serve more than 10,000 children. So we hung a shingle, and we were able to provide top-quality care regardless of ability to pay. It was so cool. We targeted the typical health disparities: access to care, immunization rates, asthma hospitalization rates, and we hit all of our numbers. We felt very proud of ourselves. But then I started noticing a disturbing trend. A lot of kids were being referred to me for ADHD. Or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but when I actually did a thorough history and physical, what I found was that for most of my patients, I couldn't make a diagnosis of ADHD. Most of the kids I was seeing had experienced such severe trauma that it felt like something else was going on. Somehow, I was missing something important. Now, before I did my residency, I did a master's degree in public health, and one of the things that they teach you in public health school is that if you're a doctor and you see a hundred kids that all drink from the same well, and 98 of them develop diarrhea, you can go ahead and write that prescription for dose after dose after dose of antibiotics, or you can walk over and say, "What the hell is in this well?" So I began reading everything that I could get my hands on about how exposure to adversity affects the developing brains and bodies of children. And then one day, my colleague walked into my office and he said, "Dr. Burke, have you seen this?" In his hand was a copy of a research study called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. That day. Changed my clinical practice, and ultimately, my career. The Adverse Childhood Experiences Study is something that everybody needs to know about. It was done by Dr. Vince Felitti at Kaiser and Dr. Bob Onda at the CDC, and together, they asked 17 and a half thousand adults. About their history of exposure to what they called adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs. Those include physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, physical or emotional neglect, parental mental illness, substance dependence, incarceration, parental separation or divorce, or domestic violence. For every yes, you would get a point on. On your ACE score, and then what they did was they correlated these ACE scores against health outcomes. What they found was striking. 
Two things. Number one, aces are incredibly common. 67 percent of the population had at least one ace, and 12.6 percent, one in eight, had four. Four or more aces. The second thing that they found was that there was a dose-response relationship between aces and health outcomes. The higher your ace score, the worse your health outcomes. For a person with an ace score of four or more, their relative risk of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease was two and a half times that of someone with an ace score of zero. For hepatitis, it was also two and a half times. For depression, it was four and a half times. For suicidality, it was 12 times. A person with an ACE score of seven or more had triple the lifetime risk of lung cancer, and three and a half times the risk of ischemic heart disease, the number one killer in the United States of America. Well, of course, this makes sense. You know. Some people looked at this data and they said, "Come on, you know, you have a rough childhood. You're more likely to drink and smoke and do all these things that are going to ruin your health. This isn't science. This is just bad behavior." It turns out this is exactly where the science comes in. We now understand better than we ever have before how. Exposure to early adversity affects the developing brains and bodies of children. It affects areas like the nucleus accumbens, the pleasure and reward center of the brain that is implicated in substance dependence. It inhibits the prefrontal cortex, which is necessary for impulse control and executive function, a critical area for learning. And on MRI scans, we see measurable differences in the amygdala. The brain's fear response center. Okay, we're going to pause right there. So I wanted to show you guys that video. It's a powerful study.、Um, what 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 do you guys think about it? Just what she's presenting there. Is it something that you guys have heard of? Is it something you've seen? Just share with us. You can share via chat. Is probably best since we have so many of us with us.、Um, tell me what you think about the video. What's the impact? What's your thoughts? We don't have any forty of us, and we don't have any thoughts about it. Come on! Yeah, I, Come on. I didn't know PTSD can lead to,、uh, you know,、uh, behaviors that that、uh, shorten twenty years of your life. Absolutely. And so, what I, I want、know. you guys to think about, and you use the word PTSD, but what I want you to think about. <laughs> That's funny, Amber.、Um, not funny, haha. But、um, isn't it interesting when you think about how childhood trauma can impact a person's life forever and ever? So when we talk about abuse among children, what is our role? What is our responsibility、uh, to our children? To keep them safe and report anything that we suspect or good. Uh, you want to protect them. You want to keep them safe. We are mandatory reporters, correct? What does that mean? What does that look like? If we suspect abuse, we have to tell the police. We're、yep. responsible. Yep, we are responsible. If we do not report it, we are neglectful, correct? And so, what I want everyone to remember is, as nurses, we are going to come across. Violence and abuse at every age. We see it with children. We see it with intimate partners, right? Whole in the homes. We see it with、uh, our elders, right? How much elder abuse we see. Let's remind ourselves when we look at that elder abuse. What kinds of things are we going to see? Maybe in a home that might say, "Hmm, something doesn't sit well." Neglect. Yeah, neglect. Like, like, go ahead. Lack of feeding them. Lack of bathing them. Lack of taking care of them. Good, and somebody on our chat said financial abuse. Be real careful with that when people take their money, right? And that's an abuse、uh, characteristics. We really have to watch for our older people.、Uh, 
Um, and with our little ones, we know that under the age of one is going to be our highest rate of abuse, correct? Why is that? Do you guys remember that was on a test? Is the child cannot talk to yeah. tell wrong? Yeah. And what do children under the age of one do? Cry. Scream. Mm -hmm. And so remember, this is also an age that some people are not. They, just because they get pregnant doesn't mean they know what to do with kids. Our role as healthcare providers is going to provide them with safety. We're going to teach the parents. And our goal is always to help the uh, children stay with their parents, okay? Anyone who has worked, just show me by raising your hand if you've worked with Child Protective Services in your career. No, unfortunately, I have a ton of experience and it looks like some of us do. And what you'll always see, oftentimes see with childhood abuse is that um, a lot of times people feel like it's not fair because the kids stay with the parents, right? But the goal is to teach the parents how to uh, parent adequately, okay? So taking a kid from a parent, what we found over time is that is not helpful and it is not successful. So we wanna keep them together, right? So this is just an impactful thing when we're looking at our uh, communities, when we're in the homes, this is where we're gonna see a lot of this uh, abuse. Remember, abuse can also come in the form of suicide and homicide, right? And that's gonna be abuse of yourself or others. So big red flags we're gonna do. I have uh, several case studies on, uh, on abuse that we're gonna take a look at as, a group and we're gonna split up into groups actually. I have five different case studies. My class has a copy of them. They all have questions. And what I want you guys to do as a group, I'll be joining you guys in these groups, um, as opposed to going through the case study together. I wanted to go through it a little separately because I feel like I want you guys to use your knowledge that you've learned in your reading this week about abuse and neglect. And I want you to to take a look at that when we're asking our questions and we'll review them all together as a group when we're done, but we're gonna start that for a little bit. Um, so we have one that is gonna be on child abuse. We're gonna have one that's on domestic abuse. We're gonna have one that's going to be on uh, parenting and depression because we know that this is a big red flag for us that we have to look at. We're also gonna have some trauma-informed care, which is what we just, um, what we just had. And we'll have one that's going to be on cultural competency because that is a chapter that you guys will be reading if you have not already will be for next week. Okay. So these are all going to tie in together. So what we're going to do is we're going to split up into groups only because the group is so big. I was going to do it with my class uh, as a whole, but we have too many people going on here. So we're going to do some breakout rooms. I'll join with you. There's a set of questions for every case study. Did my class receive the Word document? via email. It was sent to you following the quiz. Alexis is shaking her head. Thank you. So some of us did. If you didn't, I'll come in with you. So what I'm going to do is depending on your room number is going to be which case study you're doing. Okay. So the first one, group one, will do child case study one. Group two will get do case study two. Everybody following me here. And you're just going to really talk it out amongst yourselves and I'll come in and help out. Okay. All right. So we're going to do this now. Let's split up into our breakout rooms. I'm going to do five breakout rooms and they're going to be assigned just automatically. Okay. Breakout rooms are big guys because we have a big group tonight. So let's open all rooms and join in. Introduce yourself if you don't know one another. And we're going to take a look at these case studies. Some of them are a little longer than others.
Hi, did you get lost? Yes, I'm sorry. No it, worries. It threw okay. me out. Do you remember what room you were in? No, it, it threw me out right when you were sending me to one. All right, so you're going to go to room five, okay? So you'll do case study five. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
All right, it looks like we're all coming back together, so that's good. We had several different case studies here. What we're really going to do is just uh, races there too. Major points that came out of these case studies. You guys did great thinking about and applying the knowledge that you read this week about violence and abuse. So our first case study group number one talked about seeing a 25 year old lady who just had a baby and everything seems fine. Then the nurse goes back and she starts to have trouble. She says baby's crying all the time. And you know, um that uh she's a little concerned, right? So group number one, tell us about what kinds of additional information did you guys want to get on this new mom and uh what's going on in the household? Well, we were thinking with the baby crying a lot, um, we would we would kind of ask like like the feeding schedule for the baby and like what type of formula the baby's having. Um couple other things were mentioned like sleeping schedules yeah before you and, and in addition to that let's add this in addition if a baby is acting differently what kinds of things should our head say to us something should ding us like maybe there's an infection right maybe there's something maybe the baby's not as healthy as it was right who else is helping tina right we want to know who else is helping that baby um, and we're going to look like, has she been going to the doctor, getting follow-up visits, right? These are the kinds of things we look at at a new parent. And then when we look at, um, a little further, we think this baby's crying all the time, isn't sleeping. Who should we be doing a screening on at this point? The, the parent? The mom? Yeah. The parent, right? Because we're wondering what's going on there. So when we look at um, we look at a holistic uh, assessment of Tina, what kinds of things are we going to look at for this baby for abuse? See if there's any bruising. Good. Uh, weight gaining. Weight baby gaining weight. weight. Yeah, weight gain, weight. What else? What else do babies? What do they look like when they're there's something not right with them. Crying, might be scared. Like if when you go pick them up or touch them. Yep. They might flinch or be very jittery, mm -hmm. right? Those kind of things are what we look at. And so when we look at filing a child protection report, what kind of information do we need in a, a child protection report? Does anybody know in that group? Mm -hmm. All right. So you always need to know the parents first and last name. You always need to know the address where they live. You need to know telephone numbers, emails, because sometimes parents will not respond to a child protective services call. They will avoid it. And I've seen it with my own eyes. Child protective services will go up to a parent and they will take off. They will go running in the other direction. They don't even know what they're asking for. So good. That one took place and that group really focused on child protection and child abuse. Okay. The next group, number two, did some cultural sensitive care for a Mexican patient who comes in and she thinks she has cancer. She understands English very well, so we didn't have an interpreter, but uh, there's some cultural beliefs that we see might be a little different. What cultural beliefs did group number two find in our Mexican culture that may have had this woman really upset in the doctor's mm -hmm. office? That she's been punished. Say that again. Mm -hmm. That she's being punished. Or she's being that. punished. Good. She's being punished. So sometimes they believe that they're being punished. What's a way that we want to make sure we approach our Mexican population? This was on your test last time. Physical content. Yeah, when we want to be social with them, right? So we want to have like these conversations with them. We want them to feel comfortable yeah. with us and them comfortable right? Comfortable both ways. And so when we look at this, we want to make sure that we're um, letting them know that we make them feel important, right? And we include them in the in the care. There was a question on there and I want to see how you guys answered. It was about what are your, what cultural, uh, main cultural groups do you see in your region or city where you live? What were the different ones you guys said? Homelessness, good. 
What other vulnerable populations or cultural populations are we seeing? The teenage teenage pregnancies. Yeah, the farmers. Farmers, good. If you're in a rural area, we see low income too, right? That's one that we worry about. So differences in culture are not necessarily, uh, you know, limited to race or ethnicity. And I just want us to remember that they can be all these things like low income and homelessness and things like that. So we want to make sure we're incorporating and including, um, we're making sure to include in there our biases, identify those up front so we know how to handle it and take care of a group that's different than our own. Okay. Uh, very good. Group number three did a case study on partner violence. So, in, so domestic violence, right? What behaviors did we see with our lady being abused? Group number three. She was withdrawn. She was making up stories. She was um, becoming more quiet and timid. Yep. yep. And she was pregnant, right, too? Yes, we know yes. pregnancy is a high rate for abuse. So be careful with that. So we also might know that um, she's anxious. She wasn't really telling the stories, making sense, right? She wasn't being consistent. What determinants of health did she have going on? Like uh, social economic factors, maybe like low income. Good. Lack of support. Mm -hmm. And she was newly pregnant with a new guy. So it was like a new relationship, new pregnancy, new everything. And so what kinds of uh, assessment tools were we gonna use to assess for physical violence? Physical assessment, screening questions. And this group we talked about, what kind of questions are you gonna ask? If she feels safe, where she's at. Good. Those kind of things, what's the house look like? What's your day look like? Those kind of things, right? All right, we continued on with trauma-informed care, okay? So we went to somebody that has hepatitis B and um, she's arranging a home visit. What kind of things is she gonna do group number four? Can you repeat that? Sure. Group number four, what would you say you should do when you're arranging a home visit in this case? Um, reassure confidentiality um, that she that we're not going to go and tell her abuser anything. Um, explain the visit clearly. Setting up a date that works for her, a date and time. Good. And we're going to inform her. We're going to educate her. She's got hepatitis B. We're going to educate her on that, right? And so what are some of the signs and symptoms of trauma in our clients? What do you guys have for that group? What did you come up with? Anxiety. Absolutely. She got up and walked away at one point. Mm -hmm. Avoidant. Mm -hmm. She could have had like altered vital signs, like high blood pressure from being so anxious. Sure. These are all Emotional. physical. Yep, we're seeing some physical signs. And when you see anxiety, that was good. You guys kind of addressed that. You can see all different kinds of things with anxiety. And you want to make sure that um, you want to find is there any substance abuse, use, or abuse, right? Because we don't really know for this. Um, and with a trauma informed approach, I'm just going to help you guys with this. You want to ask the clients, like, what happened to you, right? We want to keep it open ended, not what's wrong with you, right? We want to ask, you know, your personal safety is important to us. How can we help you with that? Um, you're going to set that goal setting. That was one of your questions on your exam. Well, my class anyway, uh, about mutual goal setting, right? You want to find out what they hope to get out of this visit. And we're going to perform active listening. So we're not going to talk too much. We're going to let them fill us in. And our last case study was on depression and parenting. So I want us to go over that quickly. Uh, what kind of assessments are we going to do when we see um, this mom who's really frustrated and she feels like she can't succeed? What did that group say? Um, talk, we discussed talking to her about her emotional state of mind um, mm -hmm. and where she, what she was feeling on the inside and why the change was happening from being seeming like everything was good other than the fact that she was in a new community and she was young and she um, was having problems dealing with the fact that she 
could not raise her oldest two children and they were with the father and not her. And um, given her the her resources in the new community and um, why she was feeling the the guilt of, or the um, suicidal tendencies or thinking about suicide, but not having a plan, what, what caused her to have all the change. Good. And we also, we're going to give her some support resources, right? We have Correct. things like WIC, we have food stamps, we have shelters, we have all this kind of stuff. We have food banks, right? Just to give her a little confidence. And we talked a little bit in this group about good parenting and to be very careful about what we describe as good parenting, right? Because that's a personal choice and cultural choice. So be careful when we're doing parenting um, there. And we want to make sure any mental health diagnoses we're looking at, right? Because you never want someone with mental health to be um, traveling down that path road. Very good. You guys worked hard on those case studies, and I'm happy to hear that. I know Dr. Lundy sent case studies to her students. I don't know if they were the same. Sometimes we overlap and use them. Sometimes we don't. But um, anyway, we're going to finish up tonight's class about infectious disease because you had two chapters on it. You guys are doing a paper for this evening, which should be submitted by now about infectious disease. So I'm gonna show you a quick PowerPoint. Just give me a second. And then, or would you prefer a Kahoot about it? Oh, Kahoot. Kahoot, okay. We're probably not gonna all be able to get on the Kahoot, but we can still go over the questions together. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. I had group four about the hep B. And you yeah. said we would ask her what happened to you. Our girl was like on the brick of like breaking down every time you talk to her. So would we like say like, okay, when you're comfortable, tell us, or would we say? So what you can do in that situation, yeah, in that situation is you can back off from the questioning and let her sort of guide the conversation. Because if they're getting overwhelmed, the last thing you want to do is continue to overwhelm them, right? Right. Right. So some therapeutic things you can do is sort of like um, get off that topic and talk about something else for a little bit and say, what do you do on it? Who do you have to support you? And how can we help support you and that kind of stuff so that we're doing it with them? Does that make sense? Yes. As opposed to saying, hey, you got to tell me what's going on. All right. Here's our Kahoot. And it's going to do a little bit. It's week seven. And I'll share it with you guys. Um, when we're done, but um, uh, yeah, I don't only let do 10, but it's okay. Let's just do it anyway. We'll do it all together to go over some of the questions. All right, here's our pin. You guys want to join? Can I ask you a quick question about the assignment? It's actually, is it supposed to be a paper or a PowerPoint? Paper. This Thank week you. is paper. Next week, it, uh, sorry, week nine is a vulnerable population. Okay, and that's a PowerPoint and that's individual. Everybody's individual on that, okay? Is that paper just particular to your class or is that for all of the classes? Nope, everybody has a discussion board this week that should have been a group project. In paper form? In paper form. All right, we'll start because we're not going to be able to get oh, get everybody on the scene. Here we go. Children are at more risk of experience health care challenges due to what? Hmm. All right. So why are we at personal somebody, one person picked that, whoever that was, that was very good. What we know about healthcare challenges is we're going to see a high risk among certain races or ethnicities, personal income, health insurance, all three of those are going to have an impact, but we see children more at risk based on their race, race and ethnicity. We know that they have certain conditions that will put them more at risk, right? So let's do the next one. That wasn't a good one. Nobody got that one. 
All right, multi select. Uh, we'll skip this one. Sorry, a couple of these questions are about health disparities. I'm going to get to infectious disease. Why has alternate health care increased in popularity? This is a good one. Alrighty, so holistic approach is now being more increasingly accepted. It's cheaper and faster than traditional medicine. Oftentimes it's more expensive, actually. Um, alternate healthcare, um, alternative healthcare. So like our vitamins, our teas, our uh, acupuncture, our chiropractic, all those kind of things, alternate healthcare, okay? So know that it's being uh, more increasingly accepted by doctors. We see a lot more nurse practitioners working with our doctors too. We now have DOs as opposed to just MDs, which are a little more holistic. So that, that was a good question, I thought. We'll skip this one. I really wanted to get an infectious disease, but it's further towards the end, so. All right, which services are considered to be secondary in health and social care? Members, secondary. Survey. Good. Both of these would be correct. And we are doing a survey, so that's going to be our screening. And with our checkups, oftentimes those are screenings, right? We're going to do our pap smears. We're going to do our blood pressure. We're going to do... Um, what other stuff can we do? Cholesterol at a gynecologist's office sometimes, right? This can be a well visit, um, which is going to be a screening for what's going on, right? We always know we do our pap smears during those gynecological checkups. So that's also going to be one. Good. Mm, health corona. We'll skip this one. I really wanted to get to infectious disease, but I think it's towards the end. Oh, we talked about this. You guys should be pros on this. Medicare and Medicaid was in your financial um, financial chapters. So what's Medicare? Where is this? 65 and older? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be our federally based. I taught my class this. Every Medicaid is different in a different state. So when you think about who's state, uh, state administered, it's always your Medicaid. Your Medicare is completely federal. It's for people 65 and older uh, who need care and anybody with disabilities. Well, not anyone, but their disabilities are very specific. All right, here's a multi-select. Choose the evidence-based health care decisions for healthy people 2030. All right, so these are two of our answers here. We're going to have increased emergency risk and crisis messages to protect public health. I want you to think about the COVID vaccine as far as that's concerned. I don't know, during COVID, everybody got that kick in. Uh, this is emergency risk and crisis management. Increased social marketing. We know we see that all over. If anybody is as annoyed as I am by the amount of commercials about drugs out there, this is because healthy people wanted to increase social marketing. 
Okay. And so if anybody watches any TV, which I'm sure you don't because you're in nursing school, but when you start watching TV again, you are going to see all these commercials. And it's very frustrating to watch them as a healthcare provider because I don't know what do you guys think about the commercials that are put out there for medications? I think they're horrible. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they're horrible? I mean, it always has all these people like frolicking through a field of flowers. <laughs> about how they can be better with this medication. And then, but it may cause rash, diarrhea. And, oh, the less you know, side effects. Suicide. Yeah, the side anyway. effects take longer than the commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and True. it yep. just doesn't seem enjoyable anymore. The and I don't, the thing is, I don't know, I don't know, have the data on this, but what I, something that I would love to do some research on is, what has that done to our general public? Has that made people go to the doctor and ask for medicines? I doubt it. And I have teenagers in my house and I had a teenager who had the TV on and he said to me, why would anybody take that? And I'm like, I have no idea because they scare even teenagers with all these horrible things. But uh, another interesting thing about promoting social media and marketing for medications is we are the only country in the world that does this. So... What does that speak to as our uh, United, States, United States healthcare practice? Interesting, just an aside. All right, we didn't get to infectious disease really. Let's go over some major topics on it. How are they spread? They can be spread by mucus. Droplet. Yep, droplet, sexual, blood. What else? Airborne needles. Airborne needles. What else? Did we already say sex, a sex one? Yeah, well, I don't know, but that's always a good one. Anything can spread through that, right? Uh, think about bugs too, right? You can get infectious diseases from different types of bugs, possibly. Oh, we'll yeah, like limes. Yeah, so yeah. limes. Or Our like work environment as well. Yeah. Our work environment as well, like manure, if somebody's a farmer, you know, like you have to well, yep. Yeah. Uh, feces. Oh. We deal with that all the time as nurses, so remember that. All right, some big ones to know. HIV, we know how that's spread. TB, what do we do for a screening on TB? Uh, PPD? Yep. We inject it in the arm. How big does it have to be to require an x-ray follow-up? Five millimeters. Or Ten five. millimeters. Ten. Ten. Good. Ten. So they'll look at it. If it's bigger than 10, they'll send you for an x-ray. Remember that some countries give a vaccine for that. So that populates a pop positive PPD with that. If their lung is, their chest is clear, then they're good to go. Uh, what other ones do we need to know about? Hepatitis we know is spread. We have A, B, and C. Uh, it's, they're all spread different ways. Well, not all, but they're spread different ways. So know about that. Uh, what else one? Flu. Big one, infectious disease. What is our what is our job as a community health nurse for it? Flu. Flu vaccines. Vaccines. Peppers. Our primary prevention. Teach everybody to get the vaccine. For our older people, shingles is a big one. We're gonna definitely push those shingles vaccines on our older population, right? Um, let's see what else. There's so many infectious diseases. Um we're gonna teach uh, no needle sharing. If somebody has an infectious disease, remember they already have it, then we're treating them, right? So if they have the disease process already, we're treating them. So it's gonna be tertiary prevention, right? Everybody clear on that? Yes. Uh, I think that takes us, that takes us to 5.30. This is usually when my class ends. So um, I don't give a break because I give you the last 10 minutes. So what I would ask for you is to review your infectious disease, make sure those papers are handed in by midnight tonight. Okay, perfect. Bond until uh, Sunday. Today's Wednesday, isn't it? I always get confused in my days. <laughs> it's a big blur. Um, all right, so any questions at all on the three chapters? You guys worked very well together tonight. I'm sorry, it was such a big class. Hopefully, um, Hopefully we covered some content that will be useful to you. We will have exam reviews next week. Study guides will be coming out to my class uh, as soon as we end our Zoom. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll send them to your emails. 
Thank you, Okay. All right. To everybody, thank you for being so cooperative. Have a good night. Take care. We'll see, see you next time. You. You're welcome. Uh, hold on. My group. Oh, my class. Wait. Uh oh. My class. There's not many of us left. Oh, boy. Oh, well. I wanted to meet with the group of individuals, but let me see if any of you are here. I don't think so. I'm yeah. here. I'm here. I'm here. Too. I'm here yes. too. I'm here. I'm here. Well. I'm here. All right. Those, that's the group I wanted to meet with. It's Anita and Bernie here. Me and here, Professor. And Sydney and and Amber. And Amber. Susie could not make it, but you guys are missing one though, right? Yes. Yeah, I don't have an emergency. Okay. Uh, all right. I want you guys to stay on with me then. Oh, I can leave. Tina. Good. Yeah. Oh, bye. Okay. I think all I'm right. okay to leave too, Amy. Yeah, Amy, you're all good. Right. Okay. All right. Bye. I think you're good. Alrighty. So I wanted to talk to this group as a whole. Unfortunately, I do not have everyone with me. It has come to my attention, though, that the group as a whole had some difficulty working together. Correct? Mm -hmm. I would say so, yes. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this. Hold on one second. I just have to verify something while I'm talking to you guys. Hold on one second. So I think before, hold on one second before I start speaking. I'm very confused. Okay, well, hold on one second. Uh, 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 just give me a second. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne dropped off, correct? Yes, yeah. she had an emergency. Okay. She just texted oh. me. Yep. All right. So what I need to know is, is that some members of this group were not happy with the way the group worked as a whole. Okay. I'm very confused. I feel like, okay, just let me get, get through this. Okay. They, let me just stop recording for our class and we'll restart recording.